What is up, the beautiful 50 of you that probably watch this channel? Uh, we got a fun subject today. We are going to be talking about parallax. Okay, so I hope you brought your party pants. Okay, so let's get into it. What is parallax? Um, the definition that was ingrained into the very fabric of my being by my instructors through, um, you know, push-ups and other fun, rigorous activities like that, um, was the apparent movement of the reticle across the target when the position of the head is slightly moved. My instructors obviously thought this was very important, uh, fundamental of shooting, which it is. I quickly came to find out. Okay. So... To break that definition down, basically we got three planes we're working with, right? The shooter's eyeball, uh, you got your reticle, and then you got your target. Okay, so basically parallax is the relationship of the shooter and that reticle and where it lies on the target, okay? And what kind of plane they're on. So that's what our parallax adjustment knob is gonna be doing, is adjusting our reticle plane um, in relationship to our target. So when we move it in and out, we're pretty much looking to marry up that reticle and our target. Okay. That way we don't have any parallax error. Um, and you'll get parallax error only if you're not looking down directly down the tube of your scope, uh, which is pretty common. It's hard to get the perfect position every time. Even if you watch my badass video, I have about setting up your rifle for yourself. It's very hard to get in the same position every time. So we do what we can to be as consistent as possible. All right. So uh, our parallax knobs, typically I've seen them on the left-hand side of your scope here. Um, and I like to think about it like this. Um, if your elevation is Jordan, your windage is Pippin, um, I would say your parallax adjustment knobs are rotten. Okay. Um, can you win a championship without them? Possibly. Um, is it a lot better to have them on your team? Absolutely. Okay. Instead of working against you. Um, so I will always highly recommend getting a scope with a parallax adjustment knob just because I have personally been defeated by a parallax error and I must avenge myself by any means necessary. Um, no, but yeah, I, I've, I've struggled with parallax error myself, and I just think it's pretty important, especially if you're pushing out, you know, 800 yards or so, you really want to get the most out of your caliber that you're shooting. You're probably going to want a, a parallax adjustment knob. If you are hunting, you know, 200 yards and in or something like that, you know, you, don't, you, you may not have to worry about it as much. Um, if you're buying a new scope, don't get this knob. Um, confused. Sometimes they just have illumination knobs on this side and it's not actually a parallax adjustment at all. So just because there's a knob there doesn't necessarily mean it's for adjusting your parallax. So do your research on what kind of scope you're getting. Um, a lot of times they'll have these knobs, um, you know, your parallax and your illumination in infused or intertwined or those are the only words I can think of. Um, but a lot of times they'll have those two knobs infused into one knob. Okay, so um, I've also heard of, you know, parallax adjustment knobs being on the bell of your objective lens. I haven't seen those personally, but um, that is an option too. Okay, so a common misconception with these adjustments is that it's just a, you're just focusing your target not necessarily it does bring your target into focus but just because your target is completely crisp and clear that doesn't necessarily mean that your parallax is adjusted completely okay so um i had quite a bit of experience on the attackers from night force and for some reason with those i felt that my parallax uh, my target was always slightly out of focus when i had my parallax adjusted perfectly um, 
that might have something to do with, you know, whenever you adjust your diopter focus and your magnification, things can get wonky. I'm not too sure, but that's kind of one thing I noticed with those. So, um, long story short, it's not just a focus knob. A lot of these you'll see, see if I can see it in the camera here, that they have etched ranges into your knob already. Now, I wouldn't take those for scripture, okay? So those are roundabout numbers. That doesn't necessarily mean, hey, I'm, you know, I range it, I'm shooting exactly at 300, set it to 300, good to go. Um, you want to go ahead and you can use those as roundabouts and, and start from there. And then from there, you need to really finite that and adjust it. And how you're gonna look for parallax error is basically you're gonna look through the tube of your scope and you're just going to want to move your head kind of on your rifle. All right. Just, a, just around in a little circle. If you do have parallax error, um, you're going to see your reticle kind of dance around your target. All right, guys, I know a demonstration through an app, actual scope. Um, can get kind of confusing sometimes. It's kind of really hard to um, see what like real parallax uh, error looks like. Um, so I set up <laughs> I set up an apparatus. Um, just don't judge me. It is some foam and some tape. All right, but it's going to get the point across. I promise. All right, guys, you're about to go through the parallax simulator. So buckle buckle up. Um, all right, so we're looking down our scope. Say we're at, you know, 800 yards or so. Okay, I got the target right behind us here, the little sad boy back there. And we're just going to simulate what parallax error looks like. Okay, so you're looking down the tube of your scope, right? You got your, your reticle center mass. All right, and you're just going to want to slightly move your head around your optic. Okay, and you're going to see your reticle kind of dance around your target, just like that. And that is all just a matter of the perspective and that our, our reticle is not on the same plane as our target is right now. So any slight movement in our head, you know, is going to give us a false reading of where we we're think we think we're going to impact, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's move. Let's see what it looks like if our reticle is on the same plane. Okay, now we'll pretend this is the, the tube of our scope. We're looking through to check. Now we have our parallax adjusted correctly. We can move our head around and you'll notice that your reticle will stay planted on the target. And that's how you know that it's an accurate adjustment. So you're gonna wanna keep adjusting that and bracket it in until your reticle is planted on your target. Um, if you guys have ever used like EOTEX or a lot of red dots and things like that, they, claim to be parallax free. Um, what the, that's true to an extent out to a certain range, right? Um, they're obviously not as capable as like a high powered optic or anything like that, but those are a good way to get an example of parallax. Okay. So you can take like an EOTech or any type of red dot and you'll notice when you move your head around that reticle seems like it's flying all over the place. Um, actually that if you're doing close range, that reticle will stay on target. It's just everything around it's kind of moving. So, it, you know, red dots are pretty good about that for close range and stuff like that um, to give you an idea of what parallax is. But All right, guys, a quick story on how I have become enlightened about the fact that you need to have parallax on your gun. And this is pretty much the time that I almost got defeated by Parallax. All right, it was this close, uh, but it ended up saving my ass. So I was in sniper school. Uh, I was shooting known distance. So we started at the 300 yard line and then we'd work our way out to a thousand. You know, you do different positions and stuff like that till about 600, I think. And then you prone out till a thousand. So you know, first couple yard lines went pretty smooth, you know. Um, I was shooting well until we got out to about seven, eight, nine, and a grand. I kind of started struggling. And um, 
you know, immediately when any shooter starts struggling, you go right after your spotter, you know, this guy sucks. This guy can't make wing calls. This guy's trying to sabotage me. Um, you know, and I wanted to do that in my heart. I wanted him to be the problem, but I knew he wasn't because, um, for one, the wind was probably two miles per hour, right to left all day consistent. Um, he shot on the same gun with the same data. So I knew elevation was good and things like that. So, uh, we were both making the wind calls too, and I was getting the same ones in my head. So we're all, we're on the same page here. I knew it wasn't his fault. So by the time I got to the thousand yard line, um, I was very frustrated. I wanted to, uh, pretty much just punch myself in the face repeatedly until I get impacts. Um, but I calm myself down and I'm like, all right, man, I need these next three shots to count. Um, can you just go through my checklist one more time and uh, make sure I'm not forgetting anything? And he's like, all right, yeah. So, hey, elevation good, check. Windage good, check. You know, we go through my whole position. Position looks good, you squared up on your rifle. How are your last few, uh, you know, trigger pulls feel. I'm like, they're the best shots I've, I've taken in my life. <laughs> you know, it's not the problem. Um, and he's like, how's your parallax? And I'm like, you know, I, th I think it's good. He's like, check, check your parallax one more time and make sure your reticles planted on the target. So I'm like, all right, you know, I got a little time to spare. We're under a timeline, but, um, you know, I need these shots to count. So I move my head around and sure as shit, my reticle is dancing around the target. So I'm like, damn, man, you were right. And then I adjust it down. Boom. Next three shots, center mass. I pass sniper school. Crowd's cheering. All the guys are holding me up, you know, like a fucking bar mitzvah or something. But I did pass. And I I owe all of that to, to you, Parallax, if you can hear me out there. Yeah, so it almost, it almost was the death of me, but it ended up, ended up saving my ass. And now I will... I am a converter. I am a parallax worshiper. I will always have a parallax adjustment knob on my high-powered optic. All right, guys, that's all I got for parallax today. Hope you learned a thing or two. If you got any questions, comments, or concerns, or just something really stupid to say, please put it in the comments. Uh, please give me a like or subscribe. That helped me out. Um, that's it. That's all I got. So, party on. Keep it real.